Hey, what's going on guys? So I did a video a while back called 7.3 Power Stroke Upgrades and that video's gotten a lot of attention and I've gotten a lot of comments off of it. So stick with me and we're gonna go over a little bit more in detail everything I did in that video. So here we go. So if you haven't watched it in my other videos, this is a 2001 um, 7.3 turbo diesel with 300,000 miles on it now. Um, at the time of that video I had roughly 295 or something like that, I can't remember. Um, but now I have 300,000, so about 5,000 miles later. And there's some other upgrades that I've done since then. So I'm going to kind of go over a little bit more in that video, I actually forgot a few. So. I'm hoping I can correct that now. So, I've got a lot of questions about this. What is this? That's hot. I just got out of the truck. So, this right here is your coolant filter. This helps eliminate junk in your coolant system. Pretty straightforward, easy to install. So, it ties in here to your, you splice into your factory system. It then goes down and ties into the side of your, uh, you know, water pump down there. Real easy, and then it just comes back up to the filter. So it doesn't filter. All right, so it doesn't filter all of it, but it filters some of it. And I've gotten some questions on my little red pipe there. Is there that something special? No, that is not nothing special. That is paint, and I do not recommend you painting it. It's chipped all off. It's it's junk. Okay, over here, got the boost fuller. Okay. So what this does is it ties in right here to your under behind your map sensor. Normally you will have a hose that goes right from behind your map sensor here and it goes and ties into your turbo base. So all the boost fuller does is it you undo your regular hose that was already there and then you tie in the boost fuller there and on the other side. Real straightforward, easy. Now one of the other things I didn't have in that last video was right back there is the banks housing the exhaust housing I also have back there that's that's the um, uh, right there that is the exhaust back pressure valve delete so my truck no longer has that the AFE blade runner I do have another video going over this uh, basically what this is doing is it helps separate the hot air and the cold air a little bit better and get you a little bit better airflow out of it. Back there, a little silver thing right there, that is the um, 33 PSI wastegate um, actuator. So what that does is it needs 33 pounds of pressure to open up the wastegate. More than likely if your truck's got high mileage on it and it still has a stock one on it, it's probably, the one you have is probably shot and it really does need to be replaced. The turbo, it's not a stock turbo, that is a 38R um, assembly here and then I kind of built, I built that all myself. So I have another video um, on what kind of turbo that is and it's you get a better turbo for about the same amount of money doing it this way, in my opinion. Alright, here you got the um, Napa 6637, that was in the last video. And something I've gotten asked about is banjo bolts. What is banjo bolts, what is that? Well, I can't really show you, but behind all this stuff, if you undo your bracket and everything, behind this you have bolts that go into the top of the head that allows fuel. So what are banjo bolts? Banjo bolts, I don't have one here to show you, but basically if you Google banjo bolts, it's going to bring you up some, for this truck anyway, it's going to bring you up some options. So a banjo bolt on the stock. They have really small holes that the fuel passes through and supposedly that's a restriction so you want to get that out of there. So I increased mine and I got mine from Riff Raff Diesel. I will, I will leave tons of links in this video of where you can get every single part that I have on this truck. Okay? So those are the banjo bolts. There is another one on the back side of the head if you guys are going to do this. They're about 50 bucks I think for a pair of two. Yeah, I think it's 50 bucks for two. So about 25 a piece. I think so. Don't quote me on it. Um, 
but it's not a bad install. The back one is a lot easier than this front one. Uh, the back one you can get to without taking off anything except for the inner fender. You need to take off your inner fender. All right, moving on. So one thing that I didn't mention in the last video was the CCV mod fuel bowl re restrictions I took, took out and fuel tank mod. Now my fuel system is pretty much stock. I don't have an air dog or any sort of um, system like that. So inside your fuel tank, if you take it apart and you pull out the inner, inner, inner stuff, uh, in your fuel system, if you take it apart, there's little filters about this long, you know, kind of skinny. Um, there's two of them up in there. Well, I removed mine from the system completely. Um, they had junk all over them, so I cleaned out my fuel tank real well, took those out. Now, a lot of you are going to say, shouldn't have done that. Keep as much filtration in there as possible. I do recommend you keep them in there if, for some reason, you're not the one who's going to be maintaining this truck. My solo video is called, it's a guy named Power Stroke Help. Um, some of his videos have, you know, helped me out trying to figure out things a little bit better when I was first getting into this. And you should check him out. And I will leave a link in this video for the fuel um, conversion, basically, to help get rid of your um, restrictions. And also, I got mine from that video as well on the fuel bowl. Pretty good stuff. Now, when I did this, I did notice that you need to change out your fuel filter a little bit more frequently than you're used to. For me, that's not a problem. It's one of the cheaper fixes, you know, maintaining a fuel system on your truck. Just replace your fuel filter every once in a while. Don't go a year without replacing it. I typically replace mine every six months, maybe a little sooner. I check it every now and again just to see how it's doing. But it's good to keep your uh, fuel system clean um, and changing your filter more regularly will help do that. All right, moving on. So. I've had my grill off a couple times and people are asking me what is this like stuff I got hanging and what is this? This, these are just LEDs, they're LEDs, they were one because it hangs all in my grill here, it's, so it's all in my grill, it's going to be a little hard to see it right now on the grill, um, I do have it all underneath the truck, so I have roughly 30, 30 feet of underglow, so let me turn on the underglow underneath the truck. Okay, so this underglow runs around the whole inside of the uh, frame, roughly, on the front here. I don't haven't done the back section yet. I do have underglow to do it. Um, it's super bright at nighttime. I mean, this is you know during the day, so it's not as bright as it really is. Um, this is sorry. This is single color, so it's white only. It looks kind of purplish blue now, but it's really like a hyper white. Now the rest of my underglow is colors handy dandy remote and what this does is it turns on my interior so there's the interior so I can change it blue and then there's you know all kinds of different colors and then it's got some different patterns so I don't typically use this I usually use just straight all white but I guess if you want the option all right, the CCV mod, what is that? As your crank case vent. That is what the CCV stands for. What that is, your crank case. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Your crank case sits right underneath of your intake. Now your stock system is gonna actually gonna plug into the bottom of your intake on your turbo side. So on that side, not on your Part here I mean it's all connected but it's not on this piece it's on the other piece so what that does is you have oil and stuff you'll get blow by coming out of your crankcase and now it ends up inside your intake through your turbo and through your intercooler pipes and all that stuff so I did away with that I don't really get a whole lot of blow by but any blow by I get I don't want it in my turbo especially just since I just put a brand new turbo on it. so this hose right here is for my crankcase. This is the vent. 
So what it does is it rolls up a little bit, and what you want, so if oil does come up, it gives it, gives it a chance to roll back down. And then it just comes down, and comes right here, and then it just dumps into the ground. I really haven't done a whole lot. And, well, I did the chip. Okay, I have two different systems. I only use, you know, one at a time, obviously. But I have a TS chip, which I've been kind of loving it. It's cheap. I don't really recommend it to everyone. There are things you need to watch. Um, I have a built transmission, so it kind of acts a little funny sometimes, depending on what settings I have it on. And sometimes I just turn it off completely. But it is a big difference going from stock to adding that TS chip, and I run it on 100 horse all the time. I like it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cover my gauges again. A lot of this is repetitive, so I'm sorry guys if you've seen that other video. This is just a little bit more in depth. Look at the gauges, that's your boost. That is your trans temperature, EGTs are on that one. And then this one is your, your fuel pressure. I also have, this is my volts. So it tells me what my battery's doing. And over here I got my high pressure oil pump and this is my water temperature. So those are my gauges. You probably don't need all these gauges. But I like to have all those gauges. There are systems that you can get that have it all included so you don't have to have all those different pods and stuff. But I like the gauges. So you go get the system. I like my gauges. A lot of guys give you hate. Oh man, you don't need all those gauges. You just go get the get the system. It's got all in it. You can just click, 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 click. No, I didn't want that. That's not for me. I want my gauges. I like them. Triple disc, billet, torque converter. Um, I forget what the I forget what the kit was called that he put in uh, my transmission with the shift kits. I don't remember what they were called. I apologize. I did all this in my other video. Bed's kind of beat. You know this holes here this right here the tailgate this is not the factory tailgate on it and I have rot on this side so it needs a new bed something I need to do uh, I had to get new mirrors for it new headlights new grill forgot to mention that kind of stuff uh, I love this truck it's got 300,000 miles on it and you never know it you know what I'll do a startup for you. You guys have been patient. I was trying really hard not to make this a super long video. Wait for it. Guys, let me see if I can get you some turbo noise. Guys, that's kind of pretty much it. Um, the only other thing I forgot to mention was we're right here the transmission cooler. Which, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, check out that video. I do not recommend this transmission cooler. I'm gonna go to a um, the 6.0 cooler and I'm gonna give that a shot. The only other thing that I didn't mention was a Zoodad mod, which is uh, pretty simple stuff. That's the Zoodad mod right here. You, you basically basically cut a hole on the inside panel through to the vent thing here which then turn goes under your engine bay and helps more air get in there well guys I appreciate you watching 
And uh, thanks for all the subscribers and all you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Oh, that was loud. Um, I'd appreciate all the support you guys have given me, all the comments, all the questions. Um, I'm going to do my best to get to you guys and keep the videos coming. Um, so if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, leave a like if you like it. And as always, guys, until next time, see you.